Hello and welcome to this edition of the Angels and Destiny show. Why is this show called this, you may ask, so I'll tell you. The acceptable meaning of angel is messenger and the acceptable meaning of destiny is to make firm establish. So my guests and I bring you messages to establish what you need to know in the present. And also, I like working with angels and the calmness they bring. Now, in a moment, I will introduce you to my wonderful guest, Baylin Magino. But before that, I'd like to say thank you so much for watching the show live at a later date, as it means a lot to me to connect with like-minded women. Now, if you've never met me before, then my name is Ray, and I love to help women to crossroads in their life, heal their past, create their future, and transform their present, so they can take charge of their destiny in the here and now. I'm the founder of Radiant Angel Energy, and I use future life progression, past life regression, guided meditation, angelic Reiki, angel oracle cards, and hypnosis to help women who feel lost get clear on their reason for being here. And I've also created a transformational journey to help you take charge of your destiny and a journey through lifetimes. Now, each episode of the show will cover various themes of your journey. I mean, a guided meditation or angel card reading with the wisdom of my wonderful guest, like today's guest, Baylin Magino, who will be sharing how to live your inspired life by design. Now, Baylin is a spiritual mentor for leaders finding new direction that is centered in the heart and soul. As the founder of Global Dream Makers, she believes when you create your dream that you will be able to help others do the same. And as a result, there will be peace in the world. She helps people define their compass to navigate the changes life brings by organizing all areas of their life into a simple blueprint, the dream maker matrix. With their dream life defined, all decisions become as simple as breathing. Now, Balin's life experience range from corporate internet investment world to scale into a modeling company for a guy and his truck to more than $1 million <laughs> in revenues. Now, leaving the corporate world of finance, she weathered the ups and downs of entrepreneurship um, during great um, economic upheaval and served the community organization leadership. She has served as president of a local chamber of commerce, as well as co-founded a cultural organization with global impact. And along the way, she was in the top 10% of most viewed LinkedIn profiles, amazing, and co-chaired the Filipino Community Committee for the first two years of the Asian Arts Museum's annual celebration for Filipino American History Month in San Francisco, which was the largest celebration in the United States at the time. Now, she consults with individuals and organizations to get their message to the world. And breaking cultural restrictions and expectations, she has walked through the challenge of divorce twice, choosing to end the cycles of discrimination and abuse passed down through the generations. Absolutely amazing. And instead, she chose to find her own answer to the question, what's your dream? And now helps others define and live in their dreams. Baylin bases her mentoring on all her experiences and is writing the Queen's Guidebook, Keens to Your Peaceful Queendom. So look out for that one. And she's been on a spiritual path for more than 25 years, learning alternative healing modalities and exploring Native American, Hawaiian and Filipino traditions. As a bridge between worlds, she receives guidance from the spiritual realm. Now, Baylin is ready to speak about the Queen's Keys, self-empowerment beyond cultural limitations, aligned leadership, navigate change and stepping into your personal life direction. So without further delay, hello, Baylin, and welcome to the Angels of Destiny show. How are you today? Oh, my goodness. I am so blessed and honored to be here, Ray. Oh, my goodness. And especially at this time of such great planetary transformation. You know, a lot of oh. people right now are are um, concerned. They are concerned about what is happening out in the world. And I got a really, really clear, I, I got several clear messages this morning as I was preparing to speak with you <laughs> and your audience. Very yeah. clear messages. And what was, it really made me laugh. You're going you're gonna to think this is funny. But the first message was, um, I think it's a Beatles song, right? The lyric was, no matter where you are, I will always be with you. No matter where you are, I will always be with you. Because in this time, sometimes we forget we are not alone. We are not alone. And so yeah. the angels and ancestors want us to know that they are there surrounding us at all times, always available and ready for us simply when we ask, we have to ask, right? We, just, we, even just we say, hi, do. mom. 
Yeah. You must just Hi, ask, I, right? I am Jules. And that, yeah, yes, we, exactly. Mm-hmm. We, we, ju- we just have to know. And I'm gonna, it's going to be interesting to see what other messages you got through. So before we do get into this fascinating conversation, I want to remind you mm-hmm. that you can also ask questions, leave comments and thoughts, as both Balin and I want you to be part of this conversation. So please do not be shy. So Balin, why don't you tell us more about your journey the information you've been given and how we can live our inspired life by design. Well, you know, I had a pretty uh, sheltered life. I had a very sheltered life because I'm from a Filipino American background. I was born and raised here in the United States. So the immigrant experience wasn't immediate in my family. Um, In my generation, um, I was third generation on my mother's side, which means that my mother's mother came across from the Philippines. And my father came after the war, after World War II. And so um, for us, it really, to show up in the world, to actually be visible in the world was uh, not a safe thing to do uh, because you wanted to blend in as much as possible. And so I learned to not speak. I learned to be quiet but to be very good at class, be very good in school, to excel in all of those other ways that were not um, too visible, right? Yeah. And I did really well in school. I, and then I got married. Of course, that is what is expected, right? I got married and I had my daughter. I was doing everything right. I was involved in my community uh, with helping with uh, at-risk youth, right? Um, however, my husband was in uh, corrections. He was, he was a probation officer. And um, imagine uh, having a probation officer whose people that he, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, his charges, shall we call them? Yeah. Uh, his caseload was uh, high-level drug dealers and murderers. You could be a murderer and be on probation. It just amazed me. And... What happened, though, was for me, because I'm a spiritual person, I was very uh, connected to the energies. I was very sensitive to the energy around me and the container I was in. And that container was one that faced danger every day. And it was a very difficult time for me, especially with a young child. And uh, I decided that it was not a life that I wanted my daughter to live. I did not want her to learn that, you know, checking for trip wires when you go to your car is not normal. This is not normal. Uh, if, if your uh, screen door is ajar a little bit and there's a little bag there that somebody has left something for you, do not expect that it's a bomb. That was not a way I wanted my daughter to live. Uh-huh. And so I made, um, I made a decision you know, that that was not something I wanted to continue. And as I, as I grew past that, as I grew past that on my spiritual journey, I learned that it was related to um, generational abuse. It was related to the things that we learned as colonial subjects. And so breaking those patterns, <coughs> excuse me, breaking those patterns became very important to me. Um, I remarried and uh, mar- I married the guy with the truck. <laughs> and we scaled the company up to more than a million. Um, I remember telling him, I'll stick here. I'll stick here with the company until you have 13 employees. And so he he hit 13 employees. We topped a million. And at that point, I I was trying to decide, well, how do I want to really embrace what I'm really here for? Right? What am I really here for? And I started to do, um, uh, I started to study spiritual things, right? Metaphysical things. And I uh, got trained in massage therapy. And so I started to learn how we are multidimensional beings and how to um, address those, uh, any issues that may come up in the energetic body, right? And I also, along the way, just started, you know, of course, as you start to meditate and you start to really go within, you start to make that connection, right? Mm -hmm. You make that connection with the inner wisdom and then with all that is. And so um, I continued on my path and, 
had a lot of fun doing marketing. I enjoyed doing marketing and listening to other people's stories and trying to find out. So what was your dream and how did you pursue it? And what was what were your challenges? Right. And everybody said, everybody, two person, they said, believe in something bigger than you and connect to it. Be guided by it. They all in their own way were saying that. And um, so I started to get my messages. I started to understand. You know, I, was, I, <laughs> I was a little bit um, uh, disorganized. I had a lot of things. I, I was, Especially after each marriage, <laughs> I had to do what I called turn the Queen Mary, right? You know, the gigantic ship. Yeah. That's what I had built. My life was the Queen Mary with all of these different different parts and compartments. And I had to turn it around, right? And as I was turning it around, I had to decide, well, okay, what did I have to jettison? What had to be let go, right? What no longer fit? And then I was left with what I wanted to do, right? What were the things that were important to me? And so I was looking at, well, what is, how can I, uh, set my goals? How can I look at the world in a way that, you know, so I can make sure that all of my goals are set, right? I mean, we're talking about many goals right? <laughs> across all parts of life, all yeah. parts of life. How do you keep track of it? And I looked at different systems and I was like, well, you know, it's just telling you, here's your list, here's your list, here's your list. And I said, there's, you know, I'm a systematic person. I'm an organizing visionary and there was no organization to it. So I was frustrated and I was on a photo shoot because I love photography. I was on a photo shoot and I was, I was um, helping with uh, dropping a, a drop of water into a calm pond. And so we were looking at drops of water, right? And the ripple effect. And I thought, oh, that is what life is all about. Mm -hmm. That is what life is like, is it not? Yeah, we get that inspiration. We get that inspiration from spirit. We get it from within. It bubbles up, right? It drops into the calm pond of our minds, of our souls. And then we get to decide how am I going to ripple this out into the rest of my life? Yep. And that was how Dream Maker Matrix came into being. It came into being because I was trying to understand, okay, so where does it ripple out and how does it ripple out? And it's a ripple within a spiral. It's a ripple within a spiral. And it's a hologram because that ripple is within every area. So it, it sounds com uh, complex, but it's not. <laughs> it really <laughs> isn't. It really isn't. Um, so, so that's what I do with people. I help them to understand their lives using that framework of the Green Maker Matrix. We are each a specific piece of the puzzle on this planet at this time. It is our job to decide, and it is a decision. It is a choice. It is our choice how we show up in each area of our lives. And that determines the shape and texture of our piece of the puzzle, right? We come mm -hmm. in as, as something that is not as defined and we get to, in this life, we get to choose what that looks like now, in the future, and then once we're gone, right? Now, one of the messages that uh, I received this morning is a, a message that I love. It is, it's, it's, uh, what it is, it's reminding us, okay? They are reminding us, the spirits are reminding us, our ancestors going back through thousands of years, they are reminding us that each one of us, that you, you are the result of thousands of loves. Thousands of people have come together in their lifetimes and you are the result in this moment in time. You are the only one who could be like that. You are the only one with all of that DNA to celebrate, all of that diversity to celebrate. 
So they want us to remember they are there. They're not going anywhere. (laughs) They're here. Yes, in our cells. Yeah. They are here. Exactly. And what's really interesting is recently a lot of ancestral stuff is actually coming up. Um, if, if you look in the world and different people speaking and different programs and ancestral stuff, you know, the ancestors are really pushing at the moment to say, hi, remember, we've got we've got knowledge here that we can help you with. Yes, yes. I am really getting back to the simpler ways of looking and living, looking at life and living. What we've got, we've made our lives so incredibly complex. Like I said, I had the Queen Mary. <laughs> it doesn't have to be that way. Or we, you know, the thing is, it's to cut to the chase and look straight through and say, okay, what bottom line, bottom line, what is the most important thing that is here that I want to make sure continues? Bottom line, what is it? <laughs> Yeah, so what was so what, so what was so what was yours? What was what was your bottom line that that you wanted? Well, my bottom line really is excuse me is my purpose. It really is my purpose. I am here to help people pursue their dreams because I really truly do believe that when I pursue my dream, I am empowering you to pursue yours. And as I am making my decisions from that space, then I create more dream makers around me. I help them see this is how it can be. It can be this simple, it can flow this smoothly. Just be clear on what it is you want. So what's your dream, right? So when we help Mm -hmm. other people pursue their dreams, there will be peace. Because when you're pursuing your dream, there's not, you're not thinking of anything angry or violent or anything of discord. You're just thinking of, okay, how can I make this happen, right? What is the best way? Who can help me? Right? You're thinking of all of the positive things. The negative things aren't even anywhere in your mind. So we're creating a world of peace. We're creating a positive world where we can create we can innovate, we can make the world better, and we can connect with each other heart to heart because that is open. That's an opening that we make. So my you know, bottom line for me is how can I help this person create their dream? Wow. So how, so how does the matrix work? You know, if, if, I, if I was to come and see you, how, you know, what would we what would be what would we work on what would we do how would we do it well i do i work with people a couple different ways and i'm actually shifting it a little bit right now um i have a class that i do it's a workshop it's a one day workshop it's really very uh, very much a deep dive into you and we go into every single area of the matrix because there are five main areas of the matrix but within each of the five areas there are six sub areas so you know it ripples out six ways right and so we look at um what do you want what is your dream that you are creating okay so we go really deep into that uh and then i activate each of the areas right we go through an activation uh, and then um if you choose to continue past that um i have uh i have I guess some people call them masterminds. I call them circles. I have a circle. It's called the Queen's Chalice. And um, it's, it, I'm thinking about it actually, Ray, because I call it the Queen's Chalice because my experience is for women, right? I'm a woman. I can, exp- I can mm. share that experience. But I have done this with men, and it has been equally as powerful. I've done it with couples. Oh my gosh, it is so wonderful to do it individually and then to bring them together into what is the dream for our union? Oh, it's so beautiful. So I help people with that. Yes, yes. Uh -uh. You know, so, you know, I had two divorces. It's like I have learned what not to do. (laughs) (laughs) I have learned what doesn't work, right? (laughs) True, true. 
so I'm able to help people with with that uh, hindsight, right? <laughs> My new yep. 20 hindsight. Um, and then, you know, and I work one-on-one -on -one with people. I do work one-on-one -on -one if, if that is something that they want to do. Uh, but generally, um, to make the shift, it's at least six months, at least six months to really work through each area and have them start to work together. Um, and so that you have your clarity. So after the one day, I have like a six month um, program that we, that we go through. And then that cycles several times if you wanna to continue to do that. Um, because you know people are at different levels. They're at different area. Um, range of uh what do you call it progress along their uh their journey and their ability to to uh, manifest manifest because that is what we're doing we're manifesting your dream yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you have to say what you want on the menu right <laughs> Well, yeah, exactly. Because it's the old analogy, isn't it? You go, you go into a restaurant, and if you don't tell the waiter what you want, if he'll bring you, he'll bring you whatever he decides or whatever he thinks, or you just go hungry. Yes, yes. My friend always used to say, "It's as if you go to a restaurant and you say, I want dinner." You're letting them make that decision, as opposed to saying, "I would like some rack of lamb." <laughs> that looks very different. They may come out with meatloaf. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if they brought me like that, I'd be really happy. I'm talking about me like the sit up. Well, it's a little bit different in terms of your experience than rack of lamb. Yeah, <laughs> just a little bit. So, um, so yes, that's what I do with people. I just I help them to define what it is that they want because it's. When you when you actually you know it's really funny uh, about about halfway through right about halfway through the day of defining it people say oh it makes sense now because you know we start out with some with some pretty you know we start out with connection to spirit of course that is where everything begins yeah. right so we start with the six layers of spirit and for most people it's brand new. Right. And then we the next part we go into your mental area, right? All of the six areas of the mental component of your dream maker matrix. And you know, then there's like, oh, oh, right. Okay, so oh, I'm not paying attention to this part. Oh, I, I didn't realize that it would have been here. Right. So they're getting used to them, used to starting to look at the matrix. By the time we get to the next one, it's oh, that's how it is. You know, we make the leap. We make the leap from spirit down into reality here in the three D world. <laughs> yeah, make yeah. sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you know, and sense. then just we go. We continue to go on. Um, but it's turning that key for people. It's turning on the light that this is how your world is organized, and you have a choice in every single area. In every single aspect of your life, you have a choice. You can say, this is what I want. And of course, as you start to move in that direction, things come up. Things come up, yeah. especially if it's something that you really, truly, deeply, deeply want to shift. Everything will come up that says, are you sure? Are you sure? This is safe this other way. We know how to do it this way, right? Are you sure you want to make this shift? And uh, you're given that choice. There is no right or wrong. It is simply your choice. Because we get to decide what our experience is here. What we have as yeah. a life experience. And some people just forget that they're not alone. They're not alone. <laughs> so, so, so we're, I'm... Yeah. No, go ahead. No, go, on. go ahead. So, so I was, was going to say, you know, with, with the Matrix, where did that come from? Um, was was it downloaded? Um, was it just accumulation of, of, of ideas you've seen, you've heard, um, or just something that came up? Well, <clears throat> um. It was a realization 
uh, based on how I understand how things manifest. Okay. Uh, all of the different spiritual teachings that I have, have looked at, that I have heard, um, all of the messages that I've gotten, which I didn't realize those were messages. <laughs> and, you know, I didn't realize they were messages until I got a really strong one. I was driving down the freeway and this voice told me, stop. And I'm like, I'm on the freeway. What is this? <laughs> <laughs> and I, w I, I couldn't. I couldn't ignore it. So I pulled to the side of the freeway. Literally, I was on the side of the cars were, you know, scooching by, by me. And, um, and I had a piece of paper, thank goodness. And I started to write what I was hearing. Right. And it was a message from my brother-in-law. And, um, oh, wow. and I listened to it. I'm like, what's it, you know, what has this got to do with me? And I realized it wasn't about me. It was about him. And it was a message I was supposed to give to him. Then later on, further down my journey, I realized I got that message because there is, there is a receptor within me. A piece of that message is something that I could relate to or that, or that could help me. Later on down the line, yeah. I understood. Yes, I understood the piece that was meant for me. But in that moment, you know, I wrote a whole page. It was a long message. <laughs> In that moment, that was for my my brother in law. That's, that's yeah. yeah. See, it's 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 amazing how how um you, you know uh, spirits or angels will um will will connect with you, and they'll suddenly do something in the middle of you know something that you kind of think, oh my god, it's it's kind of like. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, you know, not not whilst you're sleeping or relaxing, but you're not you've not been listening to us, so we're gonna make sure you listen. <laughs> yes, you know, that's interesting because that just happened to me recently. Um, it was on inauguration day. Mm. On inauguration day. Just before the inauguration, I was um I was driving down the freeway, uh, taking a friend somewhere, and um I was rear ended. We were going 70 miles an hour, and there was this big um, tiny toss delivery van. You know, diaper service was behind me. Okay, so the baby service was behind me in a rush to get to wherever he was going, and he rear-ended me. Um, just a little bit enough to just kind of make a, a dent but and to push me forward. And so what's the message there, right? A friend of mine said, you know, the message is, Bailan, you have to stop. <laughs> It's time to stop. <laughs> I, you're going too fast. And I thought, I, I, I listened to that. I said, you know, there's, that's not quite right. That's not quite right. Um, I think the message is I wasn't going fast enough. <laughs> 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 right? Yeah. If I had been going faster in the fast lane, he wouldn't have caught up to me. Right? Yeah. I wouldn't have been in the way. I would have been in the flow. And I was in the flow just not fast enough. enough. So I, I think I have to jettison more things so that I can be lighter and move faster. <laughs> so so is, there, is there more stuff that you need to jettison then? I mean, is it, a continuation, is it a continuation of work? It's not just suddenly you jettison everything and then you never have to jettison anything again. Well, oh no, it's a continuation. Um, it, it's not a difficult, okay, so. The first time, the first round, let's say, right? And this is why I say it's a spiral, right? It's just, yeah. it's just spiraling up. Um, it's a spiral. Um, it, or some people think of it as it's like an onion. Oh, here's a layer that I am peeling off to see what's below that. What's the next layer? What's the next layer? Correct? So we have um, the first time it's, it's, it can be kind of jarring to our, to our system when you are letting go of things. But if you can find a space of love within where you can acknowledge everything that it was for you, right? What did it teach you? What did it give you? How did it help you learn more about yourself? What was that thing in your life? Honor that memory of it. Honor that, that role that it played. And then bless it on its way. Let it go. 
and bless it on its way. It can bless someone else. It can bless someone else. Or you, if it's something that you end up um, you know, destroying or burying or something like that, the energy is released from that yeah. particular vessel. So, all right, so I've released that, okay? But the mindset has to shift to that next level that does not include whatever that was. So as you live with the mindset, making new decisions now that you don't have that weight of whatever that was, right? You uncover a more subtle evidence of what that was. And I'm, I'm thinking, you know, this is uh, part of the, uh, one of the main pieces that I am helping to uh, break is uh, generational abuse. Mm -hmm. And um, that was something that was in my mother's, my mother's mother's side, right? The physical abuse was there. My mother's mother was abused. So how does that show up? That shows up in what do, you know, the children, how do they respond to that? How in their mindset of what is the way to be treated or what to expect out of the world is influenced by the abuse that they saw, right? To be aware of mm. that. Okay, so they make their adjustments. So the next generation then has, maybe doesn't have to deal with the physical abuse, but it's the mental and emotional mindset that is a result of it. Much more subtle. Yeah. Much more subtle. So that's peeling away the layers, right? In this generation, how am I peeling away those layers? How am I becoming aware of how that showed up there? No, I don't want to have that in my life. How did it show up with what I was taught? No, I don't want to think that way anymore. Um, I want to think this other way. This is what I believe now. Oh, what do I want to pass on to next generations, right? How is it showing up in my thoughts, my words, my deeds? And then how can I be aware of it so, so that, oh, there it is again. Okay, I'm going to reset. I'm not going to do it that way. I'm going to do it this way. And the more we step in those shoes of, the more positive way in the direction of your dreams, the more we are able to make a strong, light-filled foundation for next generations. And we're living from our heart. Yes? Yeah, ab absolutely, absolutely. And of course, obviously, you've got a daughter, so that's the next gen generation. So you've kind of like stepped in to say, okay, I'm going to break this pattern now so that my daughter doesn't follow the same pattern and then her children, et cetera. Yes, I actually mentioned that to her about a month ago and she just, <laughs> she looked at me and she said, mom, you did a good job. I learned the lesson well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bless her. And then, and then I also have to mention, you know, um, when my grandmother passed, I went up to the podium and I, I said my, my thoughts. And I acknowledged publicly that she had been abused. You know, it, it was at a time, really, it was at a time when, you know, our men were coming back from the war. They had been through horrific things and they didn't know what to do with it. Now we call it PTSD. They didn't know back then. Yeah. Right? And so... Um, I'm, I said it out loud, and all of these elderly women were there in the room. And you could hear a pin drop. It was so quiet. And um, afterwards, so many of those beautiful women came up to me, you know, pressed my hand, gave me a hug, said thank you, because I had acknowledged the journey and the pain that they had been through. Oh my goodness. So it was, I mean, I think of that moment and I, I can still feel the energy breaking, you know, breaking open yeah. and the heart being right there, right there. 
right? It was it was beautiful. It was just beautiful. Just beautiful. But that's what we can do. Yeah. Just by standing up and speaking our truth, we can help others to heal. We can help others to heal. Yeah, definitely. And I just felt the energy come off you as, as, you, as you were saying that. It was really, really beautiful energy. It was like, wow. And that, so, <laughs> so, so thank you for sharing that. That, that, was, that was really, really, um, that, that, was, that was really brilliant. So as you know, I do guided meditations and angel oracle cards. And each week I like to ask my guests what they would like me to do. Um, so Balin, would you like me to pull an oracle card for you and those watching, or do you want me to do a mini guided meditation? A guided meditation. Okay, perfect. So, yes. um, yeah, yeah. So I think what we will do is if you want to, if everyone wants to close their eyes, and as you do so, take a deep breath in and on the out breath, just release everything that doesn't need to be in this space at this time. Take another deep breath in and on the out breath, just release everything that doesn't need to be in this space. And just allow your breathing to fall into its natural rhythm. Every in breath relaxing you more and more and every out breath, just releasing everything that doesn't need to be here. And I want you to think about relaxing. Think about relaxing the whole of your body from the top of your head to the tips of your toes, all the way down your arms into your fingertips. For as you think about relaxing, so you will relax. And just see, feel, imagine or know a beautiful golden light of peace and relaxation around you. A beautiful golden light that penetrates into your aura, the energy space around you. And just allow it to move into your physical body, into every cell of your body, every membrane of your body. Filling you physically, mentally, and emotionally with this beautiful, golden, relaxing light. And just allow the whole of your head to relax and feel that relaxation move down into your eyes, your ears, your nose, your mouth, your jaw, all the way down into your neck. That relaxation moving into your shoulders and further down into your upper arms, your elbows, your lower arms, your wrists, your hands and your fingers. Feeling so relaxed as that relaxation moves into your upper body and you feel your chest muscles, your stomach muscles relax. All the muscles in your back relax as that relaxation moves down into your hips, your thighs, your knees, your calves, your shins, your ankles, your feet and your toes. And your whole body is just so relaxed and at peace. And as you sit in this beautiful golden light of peace and relaxation, just allow your ancestors to connect with you. All your ancestors, male, female, other energies, other beings, and just allow them to merge with your energy Acknowledge their existence. Give them permission to come and connect with you. And we just sit in this moment whilst you honour and connect with all your ancestors. Maybe gaining wisdom or maybe just sharing unconditional love as we sit for a moment in silence with them. And 
As we sit with them, we feel their unconditional love and their energy for us to move our lives forward, to learn from, to heal from the mistakes that they may have made in their previous lifetimes that was for their generation or for the time they were in and just allow them and give them permission to let that go, to let that go so it no longer continues down the ancestral line. And it's such a beautiful feeling, this connection and this release. And you start to feel a lightness around you and a feeling of unconditional love and the knowledge of all possibilities that are before you and the choices that you can now make to move forward with your life, those around you life, your children, your children's children, your future. And know that you're always connected to your ancestors and you can ask them questions or guidance anytime you wish. And in a moment, I'm going to count from one to five. And by the time I get to five, you'll be fully back in your body, fully present, fully in the here and now. Feeling absolutely wonderful, ready for the rest of your day or evening. So coming back now, one, two, bringing back that knowledge, that wisdom. Three, four, knowing that things have been cleared. Five, fully back, fully present. If need be, wiggle fingers and toes. Make sure you're fully back. Open your eyes. And if you have some water by the side of you, drink some water and just make sure you are back. And welcome back. That was lovely. Thank you. Uh, oh. you're, you're welcome. It, it was it was all it was all channeled um from 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 what we what we needed so uh yeah thank you to you and your and your guides for giving that inf helping that information to come through um that's that that was beautiful thank you thank you very much so Balen, do you have any insights or thoughts to leave our viewers Excuse me. <laughs> That's okay. Yes. Yes. I I cannot emphasize enough. You have a choice. You have a choice always in all ways. You have a choice in every aspect of your life. You have a choice in how you respond to it and to the world. You have a choice in what you choose to create. Spirit co-creates with you. Spirit, universe, God, whatever you identify it as, only knows how to say yes. So when you ask for something, understand the answer is yes. Ask and then listen. Listen. I This morning I heard it in the Beatles song. <laughs> There's an answer. My question was, what is the wisdom or what needs to be guided this in this time? And that was the answer. No matter where you are, I will always be with you. You are the result of thousands of loves. You are never alone. And you have a choice always and in all ways. Those were the messages. They, nothing says, don't do this, don't do that. It all says, everything is possible. We are here to support you. The answer is yes. 
how do you want it to be? <laughs> oh, absolutely perfect. Thank you so much for those for those words. And of course, for you for those that have watched, you know, please share um, any thoughts um, or, or comments you've you've had from anything that Balin has said or from the guided meditation, um, because we do love to hear. Um, hear, hear what you've got to say and obviously we do reply to to everything so everyone I hope you've enjoyed this and found it insightful and the words of wisdom that Balin has given you will help you further on your journey so Balin if people want to connect with you how do they do that uh, the place to go is globaldreammakers.com dreammakers with an s correct uh, so globaldreammakers.com is where I'm consolidating all of my work now. Um, I have bylanmahino.com is there, but it's going to be moving into Global Dream Makers because that really is my focus now. It is the focus of my work and of everything that I'm doing. It's the gift I am bringing to the world. I would love to help people become dream makers. It was, it's just, it's so fun. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, cool. So dreams are <laughs> dreams are always fun. And what I do is I'll I'm actually post the direct link um in the comments um after the show so that all people need to do is just click on it and they'll go straight they'll go straight to the website for you. Wonderful. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. This has uh, been such a pleasure, Ray. Thank you. Oh, it's been it's it's been wonderful um, listening to you and you sharing share, sharing your your story and giving me the chance to do that guided meditation. Um, it was absolutely beautiful. So thank you, Balin, and thank you to everyone who's watched this show, um, liked and commented. And of course, if you have reached that crossroads in your life and you need help finding your destiny and getting clear on your path, then I would love to be that guide for you. Please feel free to reach out and connect with me and we can arrange a free 20 to 30 minute video call so that we can find out more about each other and how I can help you on your journey. And of course, um, if you want to join the Angel Wings um, membership community, then please do um, uh, contact me. Um, and this is where you get a chance to grow with Ascended Masters, Archangels, Gods, Goddesses, Oracle Cards, Guided Meditations, so much more, and other members to uh, spread your wings and soar. And of course, you can always sign up to my free weekly newsletter and get um, a couple of guided meditations to help you de-stress and uh, some card reading. Um, so thank you so much for watching and I would like to invite you to share this video as I'm sure there are more women who feel lost and want to get clear on their destiny just like you. And of course, if you're watching this on YouTube, do subscribe to my channel and hit that bell so you can be notified when the show goes live um, in the future. And I look forward to seeing you all again, same time, same place next week. And thank you so much, Balin, for being here. It's been a pleasure having you on the show. Thank you so much, Ray, and thank you. Thank you for the gift of all the work you're bringing to the world. We are all blessed thank that you're doing it. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. Um, and I will see you all next week. Bye. Bye-bye.